This is a special edition of This Week, The Iowa Debates, co-sponsored with our Des Moines affiliate, ABC5, WOI-TV, and the Iowa Democratic Party. This morning, the Democratic presidential candidates. Live from Sheslow Auditorium, on the campus of Drake University, George Stephanopoulos. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this special edition of This Week. We're back here at Drake University in Iowa for the first Democratic presidential debate in Iowa. It's been sanctioned by the Democratic National Committee. All of our guests here have been invited by the Iowa Democratic Party, and all eight Democratic candidates are here. Under the last 25 years, this nation has continued to expand its nuclear capability. Uh, I would say that essentially uh, they're all wrong on this. They're, they're, they're sort of leading up. The, the administration is cooking the books, the intelligence on Iran, and we're playing into this, and I'm very concerned. I would hope the Congress would pass a resolution saying, no, under no circumstances do you invade Iran. The stop and think, what have we, what have they done to us? They're giving us intelligence saying that they're destroying our troops. Well, what about our trying to destabilize their government, which we've been doing for the last 25 years? We destroyed their democracy, and now we're looking at them as an excuse to expand the war, which is the plan the neocons had back in 1997. Yep. And so when Democrats buy into the problem of Iran, they just help Vice President Cheney, who should be committed with his state recent state. <laughs> Why do we think that we can rule that country? This is American imperialism you're hearing up here. And that hasn't worked and it will never work. Who are we to tell the Iraqis? We're trying to make them the fall guy, not our stupid mistakes. Oh, it's the Iraqis won't stand up. Tell you what, pull everybody out and turn to the Iranians. Who helped us defeat the Taliban's initially? So it was the Iranians. So if we don't bring the Iranians to help us, or the Syrians, or the or, or the Saudi Arabia, of course it's going to be a disaster. They have more at stake in our in that area of the world than we do. So, Senator, All we so you would do pull out Senator pull Edwards and use diplomacy. Thank you. Email question from Seth Ford of South Fort Jordan, Utah. And he said, my question is to understand each candidate's view of a personal God. Do they believe that through the power of prayer, disasters like Hurricane Katrina or the Minnesota bridge collapse could have been prevented or lessened? I'd like each of you to answer it. What I believe in is love. And love implements courage. And courage permits us all to apply the virtues that are important in life. And so you can pray. I was always persuaded by the, or struck by the fact that many people who pray are the ones who want to go to war, who want to kill fellow human beings. That disturbs me. I think what we need is more love between one human being and another human being, and then we'll find the courage to dispel many of the problems we have in governance. The answer to governance is not up here in the dais. The answer is with the American people and the people of Iowa. That's where the answer is. And I have a proposal, and it's the only one that talks of change. The change is to empower the American people with the national initiative. And my colleagues, with all due respect, don't even understand the principle of the people having the power. This question is for all the candidates. Unlike many others, I think that candidates may tell the truth, just not the whole truth and nothing but the truth. For example, when advocating position or action, candidates downplay or simply ignore the likely negative side effects. Can you name a major issue where you didn't tell the whole truth and describe what you left out? Senator Gravel? Yes, I can tell one issue that they're not living up to. My colleagues have all said that they want public financing. How about you, the though, Senator? No, no, I'm part of it, and I'm telling the truth. They can do this right now. There's nothing, st and I, I ask for a pledge from all of them to immediately obey the law we have on the books to use public financing. They can store their money, their millions, for the general election. But right now, in the primaries, why can't they say what they promised and they said they're for? Otherwise, it means there's a little hypocrisy abroad here. No one on the stage is for merit pay for teachers specifically. I am. You are? Okay, thank you. And, no, and George, I, can I, respond? I, I, I expand I, upon that since I've said I'm for merit go pay. Go for it. Don't leave me hanging. Okay. No, stop and think. 
They're, they're all talking business as usual, politics as usual. We, this country, we're so proud. We think we're number one. He just gave you a statistic of how bad we are. I'll give you another one. We're 46th in literacy in the world, in the world. 30% of our children do not graduate from high school. What does that mean for the future of this country? And all we get are the same old nostrums that we need. We need competition and education. We Stop and think. Here. Uh, Iran, not Iran, uh, uh, Spain, Norway, Finland, these countries, they're not the superpower of the world, but they pay for their children from childhood to PhD levels. Why can't Americans put Quickly education as the top priority? And you can't do it when you want to expand, as he wants to expand, 100,000 more troops. This is, just, this is basically a yes, no question. We've seen all this turmoil in the markets over the last uh, couple of weeks uh, caused by the credit crunch and the crisis in the mortgage markets. We saw on Friday the Federal Reserve lowered the discount rate for banks. Should they lower rates for everyone else, yes or no? Well, I would say that there's no answer to that question. Just follow the money of the people on this dais and you'll see a response. Final question, about 30 seconds each, please. You know, presidential biographers are always looking at the turning point in a life, the moment where an ordinary person went on the path to the presidency, the decisive moment. The decisive moment in my life came with the insightfulness of realizing that human governance is extremely complex and that representative government is broken. And there's only two venues for change. One is the government, where the problem <coughs> lies, or the people. And so the people must be equipped as lawmakers, the central power of government, in order to make decisions on all the policy issues that affect their lives. Working in partnership with elected government is a win-win. The people make the policy decisions, and we then would make the day-to-day -day operation of government work better.